Christians have this weird habit of turning blessings into curses. I humbly place before you my East Meets West patented Traeger turkey burger, an Asian fusion burger made with Willow Farms organic turkey, toasted Taleggio cheese crisp, papaya chutney, black truffle aioli, and microgreens on a gluten-free brioche bun. They take things that are meant to be like freedom giving and beautiful and lovely and wonderful and enjoyed. Here's mine. It's a hamburger made out of meat on a bun with nothing. Add ketchup if you want, I couldn't care less. And turning them into things that are like legalistic and oppressive and mean and ugly. Way better. Mm, yep. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's so much better, it's crazy. This is better. And why do we do that? That is the case with the fourth commandment, the Sabbath, which basically boils down to everyone deserves a break. And how did we take that and make it mean? That's what we're talking about this week. Kindred UMC live show features adults discussing adult topics, occasionally with adult language. It may not be suitable for young viewers. Please use discretion before watching. Hello all, welcome once again to the Kindred UMC pre-recorded live show coming to you, not live, but pre-recorded from my front room, AKA Kindred Studio A. My name is Chris Hayden. I'm the pastor of Kindred UMC. Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm the lay leader of Kindred UMC. And since we're doing fun facts now, I'm very excited that football is coming back, which I feel like has been like half of my fun facts in time has been about it football, been. but <laughs> I we'll like it a it. lot. Those facts are very fun. <laughs> uh, I'm Taylor. I'm your local uh, gay, non-binary, exploring candidate person. I forgot to silence my phone. Oh, keep going. Chris, dang. Keep going, keep going. Anyway, my fun fact for the day. Uh, my ear is my fingers blue. No, I that was last my nose. week. Taylor. I was playing with my nose ring. That was all last week. Well, you it's have a to new watch time last week's video to get to this week. So, yeah, Sorry. watch last week's week's video. <laughs> watch It'll last be week's up there. Video and yeah. Argue in the comments if I was picking my nose or not. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're, we are looking at the Ten Commandments, and we've done three of them so far. We're going to look at the fourth one. So this is in Acts, Exodus chapter three. Oh gosh, <laughs> off to a great start. <laughs> Exodus chapter twenty, verses eight through eleven. <clears throat> oh, this isn't a one-liner. Uh, and they sound yeah, no, not a one-liner. This was this is a multiverse. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> um, okay, so chapter 20, verses 8 through 11 sounds like this. Remember the Sabbath day, one of the few positive ones. There's a lot of thou shalt nots, which we talked about freedom versus, so again, look at last week. Um, but this is one of the positive ones. It's not a thou shalt not, it's a do this. Okay. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Sorry, I've done a lot of research on this, and so I, I know what it means. And it's a very powerful thing. We're gonna get there, but it makes me emotional. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns, for in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is, I know it's weird. I know it's weird. <laughs> I recognize it. It's weird. I promise it's going to make sense when I talk about it. <clears throat> you got it. Uh, in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. So, as we often do, let's start with uh, what are your first impressions or history with this? Um, I promise it'll make, you it'll, it'll make more sense. <laughs> Stick to the end. I promise it'll make more sense. Um, for me, it was more like I never understood why the, the Sunday was the Sabbath day if pastors and like church people had to work. Sunday is not the Sabbath, right, right, technically. Right. right. But at least not, because this is Exodus. Not according to that. So Saturday is the Sabbath. Right. So I never understood why it had to be one day when it's literally impossible to get every single person off on one day. Yeah. That doesn't make any logical sense to me. Yes. Good um, and question. It, and it wasn't until like we were talking about it one time and we were like, everybody has their own Sabbath kind of thing. Vibe. Yeah. That's, like, that's how I work, function. Like, yeah. If you work like Sunday to Thursday, and then you have Friday and Saturday off, like you pick Friday or Saturday, yeah. whatever works for you. It wasn't until that made sense for me because I was like, it's literally impossible to get every single person off on a Sunday every single week. 
that doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Yeah. So that's my my thought about it. That is a good warning against literalism and legalism, and why we should not read the Bible that way. Come at me. I get a lot of people who are really upset with me for saying we shouldn't read the Bible literally. And I would I would love to have make brisket and feed you. <laughs> and we can talk about it and I can prove you utterly wrong. If you, you read it literally, you have no eyeballs <laughs> left. Sorry. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. How about yeah, you? Uh, so for me, uh, I grew up Mormon, as I've mentioned before, uh, in, in a fairly well-off area. So most of my, you know, local ward is what we called it. Uh, we're mostly made up of... Ward is what, city? Yeah, it's, it's essentially the building. So oh, everybody okay. that goes gotcha. to that building gotcha. is part of that ward. Yeah, we um, call it a parish in the Methodist church. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking psych ward. <laughs> I was so confused, like, what? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it was mostly made up of the men that would work five days a week and be off Saturday and Sunday and stay at home mothers. That all, it wasn't everybody, but that was probably 80% yeah. of the congregation there. That was kind of the um, default position. Yeah. So they took this very seriously because they all assumed it's very easy for everybody to do that uh, to the point where they, if they found out somebody like did which, your Which day work, was the Sabbath? It was Sunday. Sunday. The day okay. that you would go to church. Yeah. If they found out that somebody did yard work on a Sunday, they would judge them silently in church. Like hmm. that's that's the level that they took it to. What does so weird in church mean? They would it means whisper a lot of this. about them behind their back and oh. probably eventually make it around to them and they'd have to hear about it. Yeah. And... I fully thought you meant there was a part in your sermon where you had to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, like you know how like in president all right. work early today. Let's all take five minutes. No, and just... no talking, but points at Phil. Before we continue, I want to remind you that we, for this, for the foreseeable future, are collecting funds for a group called Zoe Empowers. They quite literally empower communities with skills and entrepreneurial uh, education to make their own businesses and make an economy and a living in their own community. We've been assigned a community in Rwanda, and every dollar you give to this channel goes directly to helping those people. So please use the QR code over here or any of the links down below, or you can mail a check P.O. Box down below to Kindred UMC, and all of that will go to the help to help the people in Rwanda that we are getting to know as we speak. So let's continue. <laughs> no, I really thought you meant like, because like, you know, in Presbyterian churches, it's like, you have that moment of silence, like, I don't know if everybody else has this. I grew up traditional Presbyterian. You have like moments to like say out names of prayers and people no. and like everything. Like, yeah, prayer that's requests. what I was picturing. Yeah. No, but like in a judge normal way. gossip. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no normal church gossip. <laughs> normal yeah. <laughs> Got it. So first of all, let's just clear up. Uh, Sabbath was Saturday under the Jewish understanding and, and Hebrew understanding. And there's a reason I delineate between the two because history and stuff. Um, <laughs> the uh, Christian church moved it to Sunday uh, because Jesus rose on Sunday. Oh. And so it's resurrection yeah, day. Yeah. But also more literally because in the early church, all the Christians weren't Christians, they were Jews. Right. And so Saturday was very busy because they had to go to temple uh -huh. on Sabbath. They had to, they still had their normal Israelite Jewish. Jewish practices on Saturday. And so they had to move it to Sunday right. <laughs> because you, like, that's when you can actually, all right, now we're going to gather in Thomas's house and break bread and read the latest letter from Paul about Jesus. And, and like, so like Jews who worshiped Jesus weren't called Christians. They were just called Jews. Like they were just part of the Jewish culture, you know? Uh -huh. And so it wasn't until much, much later that uh, they became their own religion and their own faith. Uh, so realistically, the Sabbath was Saturday and then it moved to Sunday for kind of like... Almost like legal purposes. Well, you, uh, like it, it was a practicality yeah. and, it, and then they also assigned meaning to it, you know? Because uh, Jesus couldn't be... Uh, couldn't be, uh, his body couldn't be attended to because it was the Sabbath and it was Saturday. Crucified on a Friday, 
buried in the ground on Saturday. It was in a cave, but you get it. And then resurrected on Sunday. So mm -hmm. it, the reason they couldn't attend to his body immediately after his death was because it was Sabbath mm -hmm. and you can't work on the Sabbath. You right. Know? And that's for the dead. Yeah. Well, and so that's kind of the, the take that people have had on it. Let me remind everyone that Jesus hated that. He hated that legalistic kind of pharisaical interpretation of the law. And in fact, multiple times was called to, to the mat for healing on the Sabbath and performing miracles on this. Like oftentimes the legal culture would bring Jesus in and be like, you healed this man of his blindness on the Sabbath. It's like, does anybody care that I healed a blind man? <laughs> Like what? And then he would often say things like, would any of you whose donkey was thirsty not untie him to give him water? Like, what are you talking about? Then why would I let this daughter of Israel, this, this Yahweh's cherished daughter, suffer any day longer? Like, what are you talking about? And of course, he's got a very good point. He is Jesus. So like, you know, the legalistic, you can't do this on that day. We can, I feel very confident, just take that and like crumple it up and like wipe our butts with it and like toss it over our shoulders. <laughs> like that's not anything. That's just not. That's the new tradition. I mean, like if Jesus disproved it, then right. what are we doing even pretending it's a real thing? You know, right. like Jesus disproved it. He yelled at people about this, you know, like he proved this point multiple times. We've got a very strong Again, legal Christians standing here. Yeah, exactly. So oh, right over their heads. Yeah. So the point is not a legalism. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's just get that out of the way. Uh, so what is a Sabbath? What's the point of a Sabbath? A rest day. What's no. That? Yeah. What What's the in, in the inherent language of the law? What are we What are we supposed to not do on the Anything. Sabbath? Well, specifically though, work. work work. We're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. And obviously, because we have Jesus, we know that that work is not like, like it's not legalistic. It's not a like, and it's not like you're going to get, you know, shut yeah. down if you, if you, do yard yeah, if you help somebody do something, right. uh, you're not, that's a good thing, not a bad thing, no matter what day it is. So, okay. So the Sabbath is about not doing work. Um, who is not supposed to do work? Do you remember the list? Nope. Let me read it to you yeah, again, because this that. is this is where the tears come from for me. I love lists. Let me read you the list. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. Mm hmm. Every culture up to this point, including Egypt, where they just came from, uh, Hammurabi's Code, Egypt, Rome, uh, Babylon, um, I mean, like, you name it, Greek culture, you name it, there's a class system. Mm -hmm. There's a caste system where if you're a wealthy man and you steal a loaf of bread, the punishment is very different than if you are a slave and you steal a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. You you may get hung or worse if you steal a loaf of bread as a slave. Mm -hmm. But a wealthy man can pay the bread and whatever. And that's Egypt, Babylon, Hammurabi's Cove, Sumeria. Uh, it's like all these ancient cultures. That's that that was the way it is. And everyone would be like, yeah, a dadoi. Some people are better than other people. Like, of course. This law has the gonads to say, you, your children, who in this culture would have been a lower class. And then what else? Oh, oh yeah, your slaves. Way lower class. And what else? Oh yeah, immigrants way lower class. And oh, what else? Oh, your pack animals. Everyone gets a break. Yeah. Everyone gets a break. 
That's what this law is. It doesn't matter who you are or what your perceived value in society is. Everyone deserves a break. Everyone gets a day off. You cannot insist that your slave works till they're... And, and like, this is important because you got to remember where Israel had just come from. Mm -hmm. How easy is it for people who have suffered that kind of, of uh, oppression to turn around and oppress the next weakest person? We've seen it over and over and over again. It is human nature to do that. And these, thank Christ, these people had the wisdom and the wherewithal to say, no, it is a law that we will not do that. No. Everyone gets a break. So what do you like to do on your day off? Clean. <laughs> sorry. Hey man, if you I like it. Be, I had to be honest, I'm sorry. If you like it and if it brings you life and if it brings you rejuvenation, then by all means, take that authority. Uh, lately, it's been watching some like YouTube videos, like generally playing video games, so that sort of thing. Just yeah. like relax. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's definitely cooking. Oh, for sure. Um, See, and then I think that's like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, think I have to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah, no, I love cooking. Uh, and so I'm going to call this one early. Take some time for yourself. Take the next few minutes that you would have watched this video and uh, do something that you like to do. Take a break and give everyone else a break. Cut some people some slack. It is one of the Ten Commandments. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.